Howdy friends, it's me again. I am currently on vacation. Now you may be thinking, if you're on vacation, how are you standing here in front of the blackboard? And I encourage you to not think about it too hard, or I may disappear. Currently, I am away doing some on-site filming in a couple different locations, the videos of which you will be seeing very soon. If you couldn't tell, I am filming this uh, post-vacation, so uh, I know that the videos are good, I'm not just talking out my ass. Without giving too much away, the videos coming up are going to be involving a 480 million year old reef, as well as one of New England's infamous ghost towns, so there's going to be some good stuff coming down the pipeline. But since upload consistency is important, and I am currently on vacation, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to share with you a really enjoyable podcast I did a little bit ago. About a month or two ago, I was asked to join the Movie Rant Break podcast to discuss the first Indiana Jones movie. Now, obviously, I couldn't say no to that, and I wouldn't have said no to it anyway, because I like saying yes to just about every opportunity that presents itself to me. And so, after many years of having him as a role model, I finally got to give my opinion on Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. So today I've boiled down some of that footage to sort of a fun highlights reel where we try to keep some of the, uh, um, the podcast narrative going. And I also think this is the perfect video to post after doing the piece with Dr. Brad Hafford last week because they are a perfect juxtaposition to one another. So let this video and my previous video stand as a testament to the diversity of people that we have here in our community who are interested in archaeology. Now if you want to listen to the full episode of the Movie Rant Break where I talk about this for about two hours instead of only one, the link to that will be in the description below. And if you're a fan of the fellows over there, then of course all their information is going to be in the description below, and I highly recommend you checking them out. And of course I would like to give them a massive thank you for having me on the podcast. It was the first one I've ever been on, and it was a blast to do. And now before we get into the nitty gritty of talking about Indiana Jones, aliens, and just about every conspiracy under the sun for an hour, I think it's important that we hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is one I've had on the channel before, and I'm honored to have again, none other than Ground News. As you well know, one of the most important things to me and to what I do here on this channel is fact. And while fact is objective, the ways that it can be spun across different sides of the political aisle can be incredibly polarizing. And it can be very hard to find news coverage from a reliable and unbiased source. But thankfully to combat this media polarization, we have Ground News, the world's very first news comparison platform. Ground News allows you to spot media bias by analyzing news coverage from different sides of the political spectrum. Something that I really love about this platform is that it does doesn't just try to show you unbiased media. Instead, it will show you media from across the political spectrum and identify where it's from. This allows you to better inform the conclusions that you draw from the news you see, where instead of just seeing things that are pandered towards you, you are seeing quite literally everything, allowing you to see how important issues are discussed in different political spheres. I, for one, have been using Ground News since they reached out to me to do the first ad read, and I have found them to be a vital part of my social media intake. And more recently, I've been going to Ground News in order to gather information about the January 6 hearings which are going on in the United States, as you probably can't avoid, as well as global news covering the defense of Ukraine. So if you're looking for a better way to stay informed about current events around the world, then you can check out Ground News at the link in my description. You can also click the link in my description because it just helps out the channel a lot. I'd appreciate it. Once again, I would like to thank Ground News for sponsoring this video. And now, without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy me talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark for like an hour and 10 minutes or something. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Movie Rant Break. Today we got a super dope episode. I got a new guest and a returning guest today. Um, I got John Smith. What's up? He's a regular doing? fucking, he's whack. Fuck you. <laughs> and we we got a new guest today. Honored to have this motherfucker on the show. We got Milo, a.k.a. The Minute the mini minute man. The mini minute man. <laughs> Way to fuck it up, dude. That's you practice too. <laughs> you I didn't you practice. practice. <laughs> Every try before. It. Don't worry. <laughs> Shit. The mini minute man. There Perfect. You there you go. So what's up, Milo? You know, not a whole hell of a lot. It's really good to be here. I'm excited to be on the show. Going to be talking about some adventure today. Word. Yeah. So just for everybody that doesn't know, Milo is a conspiracy theorist debunker slash archaeologist yes yes so today it's i think a really cool episode to be talking about indiana jones raiders of the lost ark with an archaeologist who is super dope so 
I'm excited. Appreciate you. Yeah, no, absolutely. This will be an interesting one. You know, oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, that sounds a little better. Yeah, just Um, a little better. Yeah, stoked to be here. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, happy to kind of talk about uh, things that I'm interested in and things that I like to think I have a little bit of knowledge in to, you know, on on sort of a very, only a little bit of knowledge, (laughs) you know, on sort of this, like, I mean, a pop culture icon, Indiana Jones. I mean, we're going to get into it as we go into the episode, but it's one of the most iconic movies with just some of the most iconic scenes of all time. So I think so. And music. And music. Yeah. 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 So anyway. <laughs> yeah. So that's who's here today. I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. Obviously, with this group of individuals creatively, it was destined to be a solid film. I mean, mm-hmm. you have George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. You could argue in their prime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like George Lucas is coming off Star Wars. Steven Spielberg's coming off. E.T.? Did he do E.T. before? Him? I'm not sure, but he was. it's in this. I think E.T.'s in the 90s, like early 90s. Hmm. I don't like, think so, dude. Please look that up. Yeah, I, that's, that's crazy. Okay. Fact check. <laughs> fact check. Um, if you don't cite it, it's not real. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Okay, no, this actually he did ET in eighty two. Yeah, so oh, he so was like right in after. his shit in like the heyday. Yeah, really. Yeah, so I like the um, the like connotation of the film being uh, treasure hunting slash sci fi. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because there's all these conspiracy theories around certain artifacts Mm -hmm. or treasure hunting. And then to kind of accept in the film, they like accept the fact that it's sci-fi. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they like own it. And you're like, no, this artifact is real. And it does have this, whatever you want to call is happening. Like this divine power. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Type shit. (laughs) So it's like, I like the tone of the film. I think they're all kind of like that. Like they're just really cool adventures that mm-hmm. have this sci-fi like sprinkled into it that yeah. is kind of modest. And I, if I correct me if I'm wrong, like I said, I haven't seen. I've seen them all probably like once. But I think they went too sci-fi in the fourth one, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Like that was their. They went too crazy. That was definitely it. a killer for a lot of people. Because yeah. um, the thing about um, this film that I really. I think learned to appreciate in my most recent watching because I haven't seen it in like two years up until like yesterday night. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really appreciated how good of a job they did making the artifact actually be something that did have like very like the supernatural power behind it. But the, um, but in, you know, they, they did it in such a modest way. Like the very first time that you are confirmed that it actually is like the real arc and it really does carry the power of God is when it's in the warehouse and the Nazi swastika is just like burnt. Burnt, yeah. And like they come to the box and it's all like charred off. Yeah. And it's like, it's a really little thing, but like it proves to you like this is something that's like really powerful. Yeah. Um, and then of course the face melting scene is iconic. Yeah. Um, Super well done. Oh my the God, melt, it's incredible. Yeah. I love how they all all no. died different ways too. Like yeah, one yeah, melted, exploded, one exploded, yeah. and one like lit on fire. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? This is how no, yeah. it doesn't choose how it murders people. It just people. Yeah, people. God, God, God doesn't get out often from that chest. He's got to come out every once in a while, make a big show of it. You know? <laughs> that, that shit was cool. Yeah, like the special effects, if you will, in the film. Some of it was a little clunky, and I know it's yeah. like eighty-one type doing the best they can. But that scene, I did thought was done well. The face Great, melting, yeah. the, the makeup and stuff. I'm assuming that was yeah. some practical, like wax, it was, it was low yeah, melt or yeah, something. Yeah. 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 But, they did a good job. Yeah, that. it was like, dope. That's, it was really good. I, like the, to do what they did in this film, I feel is even a bigger testament of respect because of how challenging it was at the time mm-hmm. to do those things. And I want people that are listening to, obviously people already respect this film, but like for me, who doesn't have anything invested in it, it makes me kind of, you know, salute it. Cause you got to, put it in some sort of context where mm-hmm. we're in 2022 and 81 like yeah that's 41 years ago and the that face melting scene is fire yeah and some of the other uh effects are you know not like great. you even said when like the the medallion thing when it like first projected oh the beam onto yeah. the the beamed on the thing you were like dude that cgi is fire i was, and joking. I was like <laughs> i was joking and i was like yeah i don't know if it's like exactly cgi but it does look really good he's like you're like you, no, yeah it does joking. look fantastic yeah i was being facetious no, no i know i'm saying <laughs> i'm saying it looks fantastic that was your point though like yeah. No, like I was saying, like I was being facetious. Oh, like it didn't look. It good. like didn't look. Oh, good. see, I thought it did. I thought it looked bad. <laughs> see, I, I, I guess I'm stick to your guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Whatever, dude. Just fuck me then, right? Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask a question. Yeah. So, like the lost, the lost ark. Yes. Right? Like 
tell me, tell me about this in like real life because I, I know it's a thing. Yes, but is it well, a, is a thing thing like? So the the lost ark, as far as an artifact in and of itself, has obviously never been found. Okay, um, I'm not super well versed on biblical archaeology, though that is an entire subfield. Um, I have some friends who are very well, very knowledgeable in that stuff, so I can't speak on it as far as you know, where it is theorized to be or like where it was theorized last seen or whether or not there's any credibility to it truly. Existing. Cause I heard like at but, one point they said that it even went to like North America. Like they, it's, there was somebody yeah. who even said that they think it went to North America. So North America. because it's just such like an infamous artifact, it's one of those things. It's like, it could be anywhere, you know, all yeah. like all the conspiracies around it. I mean, at the very end, it ends up in the area 51 warehouse and then you get the appearance of it in, um, the uh, kingdom of the crystal skull. Yeah. You uh, see it very right. briefly in a box. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I can speak to is that the whole um, thing about the Nazis looking for it was entirely true. Uh, the Nazis were obsessed with the occult. They were obsessed with this idea of um, a, they, they believed that an ancient Aryan race had come from the sky as aliens populated Atlantis. Atlantis was destroyed and the survivors of Atlantis went on to found the great civilizations of Europe. Um, and so, yeah, they were obsessed which with is so just, ridiculous. Yeah, which is where ancient aliens conspiracies uh, theories come from. So right. when you watch, you know, the shit on the history channel those concepts were started by nazis so a little frightening there Interesting. Um, but as far as the ark <laughs> itself a little scary. yeah a little terrifying you know <laughs> but as far as the ark itself uh, there was actually a push to try and find the ark but i don't think it happened in north africa i think it was in iceland or something like that why the fuck the ark would be in iceland yeah i think like somebody was saying like i i don't it's brief like this is what happens in my brain like i hear a bunch of different fucking things from all over the place and like little pieces yeah you like connect. click it all together. i don't even know if i'm like connecting something <laughs> that's not relevant to the other thing. yeah but i'm pretty sure i heard that some Somebody like said at one point I was I think I was watching some you know those shows you probably know what shows yeah. I'm talking about they're like these weird like there's like these weird shows where they like go on like digs to like find something yeah and like they're like oh we think we found this and this, they say stuff like the newest technology has revealed yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and then they like go in like the end of the show is like they, they pretty much go through the whole thing and then at the end of it they're like yeah well we didn't find it this time yeah it's, like, it's those, like always it's like the, the Bigfoot hunting yeah, shows exactly, yeah. Same exactly. <laughs> they never actually find Bigfoot yeah. like, watch us next episode we <laughs> might find this shit yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always the same but yeah it was something like that and they were like digging in North America like I, I think I'm pretty sure it was like in Canada or something somewhere and like saying that they think they found the lost ark or something and they like <laughs> dug up this like like hole or something and there was like nothing we in it. We found a rock. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> like but we still think yeah. it could be over here We're because dig of up the, the whole continent. Leads. <laughs> yeah, really like the fuck. Oh, that's bizarre. Well, like, I'm going to have to look into that. That's really interesting. Yeah. Huh. Uh, you mentioned Atlantis and uh, I'll just segue from the film for like a smidgey because it's something I want to ask you because yeah. that's always been like an interest of mine and like doing research on it I just feel like it's like how can you do something research on something that there's they don't know if it's real or not yeah for sure so yeah. like that like and that's a lot of things where I'm like how are people doing research on something when there is nothing to claim that it's real actually real yeah <laughs> you know no, what I mean absolutely. So, like, so like Atlantis you mentioned Atlantis which I'm fascinated by the notion of especially when you talk about they're the ones that inhabited uh Europe and yeah uh, yeah yeah like they're so what's this all about like Atlantis obviously I'm assuming you don't believe in it yes <laughs> but like what is there like anything that's curious to you about the notion of it and like how it came to be or is it just like outright stupid fairy tale? Like, is there nothing? Well, I mean, I mean, that's a fantastic question. And I mean, it's worth taking my answer with a grain of salt because, because, or since there is no evidence of it, it is all opinion based when we talk about it. Um, so Atlantis was first discussed in a book by Plato, I believe. Um, and it was an analogy for human hubris. It was very similar to the Tower of Babel, where when humanity has grown past the point where it should, and we are so full of our pride that we will inevitably collapse. Yeah, so it was done as an analogy. He was Plato as a philosopher. Um, now, of course, this story was perpetuated. And one of the other things which you can talk a lot about when you tie these things together is a uh, flood myth. Uh, flood mythos is something which is present in almost every culture on earth. I mean, it's all over the, uh, the Mediterranean, not only, you know, in the Bible and whatnot, but the very oldest story on earth, the Epic of Gilgamesh has a flood story, which is shockingly similar to what's in the Bible. Exactly. Do I think that's proof that there was a global flood that wiped out all life on earth? Not particularly. Um, I don't don't think it's unlikely that people wrote about these things because water was a common feature in a lot of people's living spaces at the time. You have to build around fresh water for drinking or for fishing or whatever. Um, and you know, the same thing that can give you life can also give death. I do think that there is a very, you know, kind of poetic part of that, which could be the inspiration for why so many of these stories were written. As for Atlantis, I don't think that it's impossible that there was once a city that this is based upon. Were they, 
you know, space aliens who built a giant metropolis in the middle of the ocean with technology we have now. I highly doubt it, but it's very easy. You know how, you know, the second something is lost, it immediately becomes deified and it becomes so much more mysterious until Mm -hmm. it's found again. So I don't think it's possible Atlantis was based on a real place, but by and large, the whole hocus pocus story was an analogy. Yeah, but do you believe in aliens though? Oh, absolutely. So you believe it? See, this oh, is the thing that always absolutely. gets me about your content. Because yeah. like, I'm always like, so like me, like I've had a really hard time believing in aliens lately. Yeah. Right? And uh-huh. the reason is, is because like I really have done some thinking on it. Mm-hmm. And like, like, especially when you start really getting an idea of how fast the speed of light is. Yes. It's like you can go around the, the earth like 11 times and like, the, like, or like 11 seconds going the speed of light. Jesus so it's like, Christ. So, you know what I'm saying? Like around the center yeah, of the that, earth. Yeah, that is fast. So like when I start really breaking it down, I'm like, okay, so like if you, if you, even if you had a ship that could go the speed of light, mm-hmm. right? If something's like, like 200 light years away, like that's generations. Like, you'd be arm. like, you'd be like, okay, like I'm just going to hop on a plane to go like 200 light years, like 200 years. And then like, yeah. just to like peek at a planet for a second and be like, yeah. Oh, look at this. They have trees. And then like fly back 200 <laughs> years did, again yeah. to go back home. <laughs> I'm I'm like, like would they have really just like, like come here? Exactly. I yeah, don't know. So, so that's the thing that I think is, is interesting. Cause while yes, I do believe in them. I don't believe that they would have ever come to earth. Cause why the fuck would they right. like genuinely, what do we have here that another planet doesn't have? There's like bitches. a moon around, like we do have bitches. That's honestly very fair. <laughs> lots, point. Of uh, so lots of bitches. bitches. So <laughs> like they got hella bitches on earth. <laughs> it is worth the 200 light years. <laughs> bitches, um, but like, I mean, did there, you hear they have strip clubs on earth? They have <laughs> poles, but dude. there's gotta be a closer fucking planet that has those, <laughs> maybe you know, like not, come though. on, maybe not. exactly. You think they got an idea and maybe started their own jesus christ we got bitches in hip-hop like <laughs> fuck they're like they're killing it over there for real dude yeah it's it's bizarre though it's like you know all of the conspiracies revolve around people being like you know they came here to mine gold or get like yeah, why I heard the that. fuck didn't they just go somewhere else yeah like uh, asteroids are like full of precious metals that like people are like looking to like mine now and stuff they could just go to an asteroid belt near where they are and probably be way more profitable than earth that has a hostile population towards them yeah right? like that's i don't I know it makes no fucking yeah. sense also why would they want gold like, do you think aliens are like for dude, bitches? That shit, that's fucking dope. I'm gonna can I have that? Yeah. I love for bitches. For bitches. Okay, fair enough. They all love gold. It's interplanetary. Yo, like, yo. I also have like gripes with science in general. Like, I'm not anti-science. I yeah, love for science sure. in like most ways. The one thing I don't like about it is where they're always like science is facts. Where science is constantly evolving for sure. and learn they're learning more and like the thing you talk about things you can't prove. I find science to be very. I'm not saying I'm the brightest motherfucker but when people were like this is we can see this telescope 50 light years away and there's like water over there i'm like no you don't see that and i'm <laughs> not saying i'm like i'm not saying that you couldn't but it yeah. seems i'm like how many miles away i'm like how do you even know how to measure infinite space like i yeah that whole notion frustrates me and i'm sure someone's gonna be like you idiot this is such a but this I, is how it works yeah. yeah but i'm like does it it's just because you read it in a book doesn't mean shit yeah like, to me like and, yeah, and that's, that's, that's one of the things I think makes science really difficult is it, it's so not adapted for the average person to understand. Wow. It's not. Wow. You just said that you're he not a scientist. Did. Wow. You know? So if you... <laughs> Y'all heard this. If you, yeah, I, just, I called you an average person. No, if, wow. Uh, yeah, you come are. on your show. <laughs> Disrespect. I am pretty average. No, but wow. it's like if, if you have like an average, you know, understanding of space and science and shit and like some NASA scientist walked in here and started talking to you about it, the three of us would, it would go right over our fucking heads. Absolutely no Well, idea. that's like the whole flat earth thing, right? Like, it is. Like flat earth is really built around a bunch of people who aren't scientists like trying to yeah. like debar like debunk yeah like yeah yeah nasa with like some bullshit scientific yeah, method that yeah. they created in a garage yeah trying to figure out that the earth is flat now that doesn't mean that i'm c- convinced the earth isn't flat I, yeah i haven't actually seen yeah, it i can't space, confirm so this valid. Exactly. Yeah. Fair Fair enough. Enough. i'm not saying it is i'm not saying i have no fucking idea i'm just saying like the majority of people who are flat earthers like when you listen to their argument it's like if you stand on top of a mountain and look far <laughs> enough you can't see a the flat earthers they're like they're pretty much doing this scientific method of like if i can stand on top of a mountain and i can and i can't see the earth's curvature Mm -hmm. then therefore there's no curve in the earth and i'm always just like bro like if an ant stood on a boulder like he wouldn't see a curve in the earth either like you could even put him on a on a on a you know toothpick he still wouldn't be able to see a curve in the earth like you're just not high enough up you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like it's not a big fucking deal so it's like it's always like this this battle between like perspective science 
versus like scientific, real scientific method through like real scientific yeah. practices, right? Because it's very hard to believe something that you can't see. You know, like I, none of, if any of us went outside right now, stood on the fucking porch and looked out into the woods, you couldn't tell that the earth is round. Even an know? average person? Even an average person. <laughs> so if you went out there, right, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell the earth no. is round, you know? So until you're like in a fucking spaceship looking at the earth from the sky with your own two eyes, you don't have, you know, that concrete proof. But we have thousands and thousands of pieces of actual scientific evidence proving it. I mean, the argument's yeah. always about the flat earth thing. The argument's always that, like NASA's full of shit. Exactly. Right? And so that's like another thing I wonder. Everything NASA, yeah. And then what else do we have? So that's a perfect way for them to just, you know, just filibuster their way into being right. Because it's so much easier to say bullshit than to actually research things. Right. So if you just like, if there is an organization that's in charge of actually researching this stuff, all you have to do is just be like, oh, well, they're lying to you. Right. It's they, you well, know, I they do like, are but all. See, this mm-hmm. science, I do like deductive reasoning. Like, oh, absolutely. So and, like, yeah. I like to always put stuff in perspective. In for sure. Of, like if NASA is fraudulent. Yeah. Is there proof that the Earth is round, right? Yeah. Like, so, like, you know, in that scenario, if they're not fraudulent, mm-hmm. right, then, yeah, obviously, if they're not fraudulent, there's tons of proof. But, like, yeah. if they are, and let's say every other space organization in the world is also fraudulent yeah. as well, like, is there proof that the Earth is round? Yeah. Like, so, I mean, that that's another interesting thing is, like, if you take into account, like, the, the, the mentality that a lot of flat, flat earthers seem to have is that NASA is the only one saying that the earth is round <clears throat> yeah. when it's like you can go back to ancient Egypt and they knew the earth was round by looking at the length of uh, obelisk shadows yeah. in like two different places. Yeah. Well, like, I was going to bring that up. Like, yeah. they, like in different, like far distances, I thought they would yeah. check like if you could. On the same day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like debunks. Just that notion alone, yeah. the whole flat earth bullshit. Yeah. And it was done like 3,000 years ago. <laughs> like you don't need a fucking satellite. Yeah, but aliens did. It was aliens. Yeah. Aliens made the earth round. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So Indiana Jones. <laughs> One of the funniest things about this movie to me was just like like the interactions with the female lead. What was her name? Marion. Marion. Yeah. The interactions with her, like, just all the time. Like, first of all, she's a gangster. You were going to Oh, yeah. No, she's like, a gangster. Like, people, people always talk about, like, damsels in stress. Like, women specifically will be like, oh, they're always in need of a man. Yeah. But, like, this woman, like, needed the help of a man, but didn't and was, like, out drinking men and out Yeah, she them. was just, like, It's like, they've been just, doing thorough yeah, 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 it's she not. She was badass. Yeah. The, women always get held with respect. It just depends on the character that you're playing. Like, mm, yeah. you know what I mean? They've been since the 80s and before. Look at Leia, 70s. She's like the strongest bitch ever. Like, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like, she, for sure, so for they're sure. always, so that whole notion I want to bring yeah. out, like, they always have had a respect in Hollywood. Like, obviously, King Kong, they got the girl, but yeah. like, in so many films, even to this day, now, in my opinion, it's a little overdone yeah. with the making a point of the strength mm-hmm. of a female, but right, right. Um, they've always respected them, I think, to some degree. Yeah, yeah. I think there, there was definitely a period where <clears throat> the mentality was so much more backwards than it is now and was in the era of, you know, the film we're talking about today. Right. So there definitely were a lot of movies where it's like, I grew up watching, you know, a lot of black and white movies with oh, my yeah. family and stuff. Errol Flynn, I fucking love Errol Flynn. He was an old, you know, swashbuckler, you know, actor in black and white movies, always played a pirate. Every fucking woman in those movies, like, they couldn't walk without a man there. And it's just like, why the fuck are you guys doing this? Like, you can have her be an actual character, believe it or not. So it's great to, like, watch a movie like this where it's like, yeah, you know, she got, like, captured, but anytime someone is, like, coming up to her, she just tells them to go fuck themselves right to her face, you know? Like, she is just badass. It's fucking awesome. And then, it's funny because you get followed up with a movie like, uh, I don't know when the last time you guys watched Temple of Doom was. I have but like a minute. Yeah, it's 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 a long one. It's my least favorite of them, honestly. I, I like Crystal Skull more than I like Temple of Doom, believe it or not. Oh, that's um but the female lead in that is just like the most useless person ever. I'm like, why did you write this character after you wrote Marion, yeah. who's just badass? And this person is just like, you know, like, oh, my dress is gonna get dirty. It's like make her more than just like that come on i think it's a cool dynamic to change out from the first one it is it's it's a funny situation to put them in you know yeah Yeah. but it's it's a cheap laugh it's just like come on like (laughs) make her at least develop through the movie to be like all right (laughs) i can deal with this you know agree yeah Yeah. or like or that like that way she acts gets her killed which would be yeah yeah that would be ironic she's (laughs) she's stupid enough where it actually got her yeah it's like well shit yeah Yeah. (laughs) repercussions Uh, yeah but no yeah like uh because the another thing that I noticed was just like I feel like the accents were all over the place. Like, like I didn't, I didn't even <laughs> like, think there wasn't that. any single accent in there that was accurate. Like that guy was supposed to be like his like arch nemesis was supposed to be French. 
Like I, he was breaking in and out of yeah. a French accent. Like, the time. <laughs> like sometimes yeah. it was French. Sometimes it was like British. Sometimes it was just straight American. Like, I don't know like where he was at there. <laughs> and then like, I like I think their depiction of Egypt, like I just watched Moon Knight. Like, I don't know if you've heard of it. I Moon actually Knight. haven't seen it yet. I heard but, it's good though. But yeah. like, I just watched Moon Knight and like, I guess they did a really, really good job at representing what Cairo looks like. Mm. like in that the show, I mean, I thought it was cool, but like, I just think they're like depiction of Cairo. Oh, yeah, this is just hilarious. Was... Everybody's wearing white robes. Like nobody has yeah. anything else to wear but white robes. Yeah, there's one guy who had a black robe, on <laughs> and he got shot yeah. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, you wear something different. Get like, the fuck out of here. Even Idiot yeah, Jones at one point was like, he like walked in the room with the French guy, and he's like, these Arabs don't give a shit. Yeah, like, yeah. There definitely is some like very like subtle racism in it that I'm like, well, it's not even that subtle. It's pretty you know apparent yeah, it's now. But it's like stuff. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like this is. There's no way that Cairo's ever just. Like, like a ton of people with like white robes and white turbans yeah, no, on. Not speaking to each other, just walking around like, yeah, yeah. Cheering it's, for like Indiana Jones when he like drives by in a truck. They have no idea who yeah, he is. He just drove 30 miles. Guy, yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Bro. I loved it though. Nice hat. <laughs> nice Dude, hat. he invented brown. That's a great color. Wow, we should, we should try that. <laughs> yeah, no, so, it is. It's it's bizarre. Uh, some of the representations of Cairo in that film for sure. Yeah. So like how much of this movie was actual archaeology? Like, and fucking none of it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the other thing. Figured. Is like Indiana Jones, great. You know, you can obviously you know talk day in and day out about like sexism and racism and stuff like that. And while those are all important things to talk about, it's like it's a movie from the '80s. Take it with a grain of salt. Of we know, you know. But when you look yeah. at it as far as like an adventurer, like he's a great adventurer. He's a fucking awful archaeologist. No, just, I mean, like as far as you know, the, the, the thing that comes off the top of my head, uh, you know, homicide is genuinely frowned upon when you're you know doing an archaeological dig. You're, you're not really supposed to do that. He works so. Many yeah, no, he killed so many fucking people. He killed more people than he found artifacts. Yeah, I feel like we're not. Yeah. We're okay with it. That's fair. So like, that's all right. You can kill those. Those don't really count. But like, come on. Yeah. So still, he racked up a pretty big death toll. Um, but I mean, just the other things, like when he, you know, goes down into the, you know, into the tomb with like the Anubis sculpture, yeah, and that's they so lift not up. Egyptian, it, like, it's like painted. It was yeah. It's just like this giant. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Either yeah. way, they they that's lift up the like the cover of the you know the the stone sarcophagus that the Ark is in and just throw Throw it it. and it just fucking shatters. Shatters. I'm like, this held the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. For real. I was like, I looked over when we were watching, I was like, there's no way those two men could pick that rock. Oh, absolutely not. No fucking way. That thing weighed tons. Yeah, exactly. And then like, you know, in the very beginning, I mean, it starts off with him stealing an idol. Like, you know, he has like two guides with him and he's like, you know, the, I can't remember what the tribe was that lived there, but he's like, you know, like, oh yeah, there's poison darts. They're fresh around here. Like, so maybe you're stealing from them. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> you know, and to be fair, he's trying to get it before, you know, a Nazi archaeologist rival is and he wants to put it in a museum. But, you know, even now, you know, it's acknowledged that just because something was taken for the intent of going to a museum does not mean that it was justified. Right. I mean, yeah. like recently there's like, you know, the, the Elgin marbles are a big one, which were the statues at the top of the Acropolis. And those are currently held in um, the British Museum in London, even though they're Greek. And there's been all this stuff about like, can we have those back, please? Because you mm, just took them right. from us. So right. it's like, yeah, it's great. Know. They're in a museum. You know, his whole slogan throughout the movie is it belongs in a museum but like you still stole it you know so yeah like even like the Ark of the Covenant like it's like you took it off of Egyptian soil so it could go in a United States museum so you know even some modern archaeological principles <laughs> or a warehouse. are yeah or a warehouse it's not even put in a museum yeah, yeah so yeah. yeah so you know his, his his morals were good that he wants it to be for public education but still but I just think it shows like like all this movie just kept reminding me is that like I, apparently the Nazis put a lot more money into things they want than Americans do because yeah. Amer- the American government was like here we'll give you 5,000 bucks in like a, a plane yeah. and figure it out <laughs> yeah, the Nazi government's like let's like hire a fucking yeah, like, fuckload of people yeah. to go get this shit here's yeah. 10,000 people and 10,000 shovels get to work yeah yeah no absolutely so he, that's what I was wondering when I was watching it. He was just trying to steal shit for museums. Like he wasn't making shit off it. His intent. He was making money, but he was getting paid to get it into a museum. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so there, there's even a part at the beginning. I kind of, I, I don't remember off the top of my head what it was, but you know, it's the first scene of him in his classroom. He's in his professor attire. And, um, he's a student. The other guy comes in. Love. Oh yeah. The, the love you thing. <laughs> hilarious <love> scene. <laughs> but like right after that, um, uh, is it, I think it was Marcus Brody. The other guy comes in another professor and he's talking about like funding. He's like, I'm going to go try and find the idol that he stole at the beginning um, but it was picked up by Belloc and he's like I need funding for it and he pulls out a bunch of artifacts he's like sell these to the museum and then the guy says or Belloc says 
or not Belloc, whatever the other professor's name is. He says like, oh, the museum will take them, no questions asked. And it's like, oh yeah, that's great. They'll be in a museum, but where the fuck are these from? from? Like, it's great to look at them in a museum, but the whole point of archaeology is to record it because once it has been taken out of the context, it's fucking useless. Like, yeah, it's really cool to look at an arrowhead in a museum, but if that arrowhead was found in the dirt, in like a human femur, like it'll tell you so much more. So once that thing has been taken, it's effectively useless. Right. Um, you know, even the, the temple in the very beginning where he, you know, gets the fertility idol. I mean, the whole thing got fucking destroyed. It's right. like, imagine how much you could learn about, you know, carvings and obviously it's fictitious, but right, you know, but so it's life, interesting yeah. in real life. It's like, I mean that, that whole site could I, have yielded so much information. I think a modern like version of that in a movie is like black Panther. Have you seen it? I actually haven't. So in black Panther, to. there's a part where Michael B. Jordan's character like goes into the museum and he's like, he's like asking this like white lady who works in the museum. He's like, He's like, so like, where did this come from? Hmm. And she's like, oh, this came from this tribe in Africa. Da, da, da. And he's like, okay, where did this come from? And he's like, this other, other other tribe in Africa. He's like, yeah, what about this? And she's like, this I think came from like the same tribe. Da, da. He's like, nah, this came from Wakanda. Like, oh, he's I like, see, nah, yeah. this came from, came from Wakanda. And you stole it from my ancestors. Holy and he's like, shit! He's like, just like you stole everything else in this museum, dude. And that then he's is like, hard. And then he kill, he, he like po- poisons her. They like kill everybody and steals it back. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, it's fire. So like that, <laughs> that's that fucking scene, awesome. That's exactly it. That scene is cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, nah, you stole this from my ancestors. It's just like you saw everything else. Yeah, he also back, takes like dog. a mask too from there. He like yeah. grabs the mask. But he's, he's, the, the guy's like, is that also a uh, vibranium? The guy's with uh, who's uh, Andy Circus. He's with mm. Andy Circus. Like, is that also vibranium? He's like, nah, I just liked it. He's like, I just, <laughs> I just like the way it. Makes I mean, they work. stole it. I may as well just steal it as well. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, right, right. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. How do you feel about his weapon of choice, which is the whip? The whip's fucking awesome. The whip's like, awesome. It's yeah. just, it's weird. It's unique. I mean, it hasn't been done enough for it to be like iconic for another character. Like. Indiana Jones has the whip. Yeah, he has his like fucking cult, but he's got the whip, and that's the weapon. It's that's, sick. He's such a pimp. He like has a whip. Like I'm saying, like I, I don't mean to like yeah. keep like be redundant with it, but like this character, <laughs> there's a reason I think he's so dope. He's like yeah. if Harrison Ford, who's like the man. Yeah, he's coming off fucking Star Wars, and he does Indiana Jones. All the bitches are like obsessed with him. His weapon is a whip. He's a professor at a college, but. All the students, the fuck sexy with him. professor, Yo. Ar- explore archaeologist icon. Yeah, like, like it doesn't get better than that. He made the fucking genre. How can you make like archaeology was not a hot thing? I mean, a professor, he yeah. like makes it like a thing. It's yeah. so sick. So like, I just want to like really give the man props and Absolutely. the writer who made the characters and everything. Like it is super. There's dope. so much iconic shit in this movie. Like, yeah, the music. First yeah, of all, you don't realize how iconic that music. Yeah, I've heard it when I go to like I don't know what it's Universal or something. Where where does where is the is it Disney? The places where Indiana Jones now. ride is? Yeah, now, now it is, is, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So, like, there's, like, obviously when you go on the rides, like, there's the Indiana Jones ride that has the songs and whatnot, but, like, the the boulder rolling, oh, running, shit. like, yeah. you, just, the like, chase scenes, like, there's always chase scenes because he's, like, has treasure or he's yeah. trying to get away yeah. from someone. Like, that's a very iconic thing, which at the time, too, those are hard to do. Like, they're driving yeah. the real cars, like, in the desert, I think. You know what I mean? Like, blowing shit up. And that's become a staple, I think, in all the... I'm pretty sure they really drove that car off that cliff with all those people. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> there were casualties in making this movie. Yeah. Rest in peace. Blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, really shit. I was like, and when that happened, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Holy fuck, they're actually <laughs> that's dead. A Jesus. Real clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. oh my god yeah that the the, the the like chase scenes are also just so good like yeah. the, i think something that really speaks to them is just how simple they are like the car chase where he's like climbing around the cars like so much happens and the scene never really changes like yeah like a car will crash or like some people will jump off but like you're very you're always aware of like exactly what's happening yeah. and like he, you know there's no giant explosions and you know like planes and stuff and they do that in other movies and it's cool but like it's just such a simple concept it is. even the plane on the tarmac like little things are introduced like the guy falls forward and it starts moving right. so it adds another element and then yeah. the oil starts flowing and she yeah. gets locked in the cabin like they're all just tiny little things it doesn't change the setting really at all mm-hmm. but it just keeps building the suspense they're just expertly done it's yeah. really good yeah, they definitely I, I utilize agree. this like what they're doing well by like having progression in the scene like the fucking car c- chase scene is a couple minutes yeah which yeah. They're, like 81 like that's even more challenging you know what i mean like i feel like the execution needs to be really there because it's not like you can go in uh, cg it all perfectly yeah, like, and, yeah. And so it's just another testament of like wow this movie really holds it down and the simplicity like you're talking about is mm-hmm. like is so it's so undervalued now mm-hmm. in cinema. Like you go into movies and there's just so much, ex- like you said, explosions yeah. and planes and 
flips and booms and bams and it's like you lose someone's cutting you know yeah like it's, it's, it just loses that authenticity feel like yeah. if i go watch a fast and the furious movie now you know Great it's example, like, oh, yeah. i'm just like dude i can't even follow this because they're flying in outer space like i'm like what is going on yeah. in a car i'm like this is just not not even legitimate i think the know? classic one is like transformers yeah like all the michael bay shit where of you course. just like watch it it's like yeah it's fun to watch because you can just shut your brain off and be like <laughs> just as all this crazy shit is happening right. and then you know like you watch this and like I feel more stressed watching Indy hold on to the grill of the front of a car and like one of the things bends than I do when I see Optimus Prime just like, you know, just killing civilians or yeah. fucking whatever. <laughs> yeah, just like on a highway blows up. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's more stressful to just be like, it's a very just like intimate scene. Like you're very focused on uh, everyone that matters, yeah. you know? And yeah. all the stuff feels real. It's really well done. Uh, you can, there's definitely, when you watch, uh, I guess the iconic <laughs> or just really well done older film, they hit a little different. And when you're watching, you're like, this is cinema. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is, and sometimes with all the digital nowadays, I do feel some of it's a little saturated and just cheap, even like expensive movies like Marvel. Like they, I don't want to say cut corners, but because of the technology, they like miss out on certain elements. And then we like praise when they like kind of cut corners less. You're like, Oh, the cinematography. Yeah. Like they did that one shot. It's like, yeah, but normally they just kind of do everything in post. It's not Mm -hmm. as like yeah. authentic and real and something that you can be like invested in, you know, like the fucking fake car that fell off. You were like, Oh shit. It was like, you know <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. It was like, that's like a wild <laughs> thing to happen just in the mix of like this, yeah. like little car chase. Have you ever seen Iron Man one? Yes. Okay. So like, movie. like a perfect example, what you're saying is like in Iron Man one, we watched the suit get put together piece by piece when yeah. he puts it on. And it's like a, such an amazing yeah. moment. And then you get to like infinity war like, where he presses a button and it just gets on his body. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you lose over time because they're trying to do so much more. You yeah. lose that, like the little stuff that, that, that really makes it like interesting and intriguing because you're seeing each piece of the puzzle being put together. Yeah. And that's kind of the same thing with this. It's like you, right now we have so much more investment in this car chase scene that's happening with mm-hmm. just like a couple people on a road you know and him jumping around on the the truck and whatnot because it's just it's it's the simple stuff right it's the small stuff we don't need like all the crazy extra Uh, crazy because then when a car does fly off a cliff i'm like holy shit (laughs) fucking car just (laughs) fell off a fucking cliff (laughs) you think they're okay (laughs) shit (laughs) these people are fucking dead it's crazy yeah how did you feel about the choreograph and the fighting and shit i think it's fun it's like I, I don't think it's like believable per se. Like Definitely there's not. some parts that are just like okay, come on. Like the punch sound effect is so like outdated, where it's just very obviously a foley artist just like hitting some meat or something <laughs> like that, and it's like the same sound every time. Yeah. But like it's fun to watch. There's one I, I know it's, it's from uh, it's from the Last Crusade, but like um, the one where he pulls out he pulls out a luger and he like shoots like four people like like through, and it's like yeah, it's kind of like campy but it's hilarious and it's like this is fucking awesome and through all of those movies the fighting just feels like so enjoyable to watch uh, like the two like the two of them fighting um again I, I know I keep bringing up the plane scene but that one's great because like it shows you know Indy is just fucking unstoppable for so much of it and then this guy comes out who's just like a fucking mountain of a person and just kicks his ass yeah. and like you see like a whole different type of fighting like it's creative it's not just a boxing match now you know Indy like throws sand at him and like kicks him in the balls, balls and like yeah. does all this shit to be like I'm gonna try and like outmaneuver him because I know I can't just outgun him. Right. So like even though a lot of it is very kind of cheesy now, like this is what like set the standard. Well, just a little breeze. Oh, there we oh, go. Yeah. Good. So <clears throat> I, I don't know. I think it's real good. But uh, no, I fuck with it. it. It's quirky, but I fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Fucking like there was one part that I watched that I was like it was when she pulls out the pan. You know, yeah, and then she runs around the corner, and you just see him, her running, oh, and him yeah. chasing, and like he turns around the corner and in, into the room, like really, like slow and like just like dainty, like <laughs> like he's chasing this girl trying to kill her, and he like runs around the corner, and he just like, turns in, and then all of a sudden he falls out. And I was <laughs> just, just like, yo, don't. I was like this, I was like this is just so like can't be, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. I, yeah, like, the like you like Miles said with the fighting stuff. I look at it as like quirky and you just kind of like chuckle at it. You're yeah. Like this is the style. It was almost a style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though it kind of wasn't, it's just like what they, what the pinnacle I think of choreograph was for fighting. Yeah. Like this is how the best we can make it look. And so, yeah, I take it for quirk and yeah, just kind of move totally. on. I just laugh at it. I, I think uh, I was thinking about um, when I was watching it, you know how like they start digging 
like in the same dig site, but like yeah. like thirty feet away. <laughs> yeah. Like nobody notices that. Yeah. Like <laughs> like until like it's they've already got in and got the yeah. arc out. Like just nobody notices this random group of people like yeah. up over on this hill all like, the time digging uh, this other. Like I was like. I was like, how? Like, there's no way that someone wasn't there's They don't have, like a perimeter set. Yeah. And even when they like stopped him after he jumped, jumped him down, he had like the rope in there. Yeah. And like, was it, what was his friend's name? I don't even know what his friend's I name forget. was. Yeah. But anyway, like they Sala, I think Sala. Sala yeah. yeah. So they like get him and they like pull him away. And like, they didn't even like check the hole to see if somebody was in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> there, there are a lot of definitely like, just like big <laughs> plot things. Like the one that always got me was, you know, he saves a day, jumps off the ship and ends up on the u-boat and then it shows the u-boat like sailing through the mediterranean i'm like you're telling me these motherfuckers didn't go underwater, underwater? that whole fucking time like that's the whole point of a u-boat <laughs> you know so either they didn't go underwater or this soaking, man can hold his breath he was for a really long wet, time though. he was soaking this is true. wet so like one way or another yeah. or, or what? he was soaking wet so maybe he just is aquaman yeah I don't know, man. so and it's things like that where i'm like yeah does that make any sense absolutely fucking not do i love it anyway hell yeah, yeah. i do yeah <laughs> yeah Dude, that's so funny yeah it's great I mean, in archaeology, is there ever a situation where, like, you know how he finds the staff and the medallion Mm -hmm. and, like, the light hits it the right way and Mm -hmm. it hits a location on this little map and it tells him exactly where, like, Mm -hmm. this dig site is supposed to be? Like, is there ever anything, like, proven, like, in the history that comes to your mind that's, like, where there's almost, like, this kind of, like, a treasure hunt thing for... Huh. any kind of a location like i'm curious because i feel like that's a common theme even like in assassin's creed i'm an assassin's creed yeah, fan for sure like in assassin's creed you had to get like this staff in order to open up this chamber and like do that you know what i mean like mm. it's always like this this kind of <laughs> yeah. thing you know is there treasure maps or not <laughs> i mean i'm sure there are treasure maps um but i also don't know why some like how a treasure map would come into like fruition like why would you leave a map that just shows you exactly where to go for all your valuable shit. You know, like I would just be like, well, I remember where it is. I'll go get it later. You know? So it just, I'd rather bank on that than have a paper trail to it. So I think that like there, there are obviously, um, you know, ways where things have been tracked down. Um, but I don't think it would be quite as quest like as, you know, Assassin's Creed or an Indiana Jones where, you know, he finds the staff and he connects it and the light falls through as far as light hitting stuff. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that work with the solstice, which are kind of neat. So, um, I guess one that kind of comes to mind is there's a a place out West called the Anasazi sundial, which is like these three slabs of like stone, which have this carving on like a cliff face next to them. And not only does do the shadows all line up on this carving, um, at the winter and summer solstice, but they also do the, is it the, the equinox like halfway between like they managed to time it all perfectly. So the shadow of these three giant, like multi-ton stones all fall in like different places on this carving at these specific times of the year. So like, you know, while it is unlikely that there would be a gemstone that shines a beam at the right place because the sun's in a different place every day, you're not going to get it through the same hole every time. Um, But, you know, there are that technology of people tracking the sun and using the sun for their ceremonies was very true. Mm -hmm. So there's things quite similar to that, but not to that quest like extent, unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Damn it. Yeah, I know. I wanted to find a treasure map. I mean, there might be one. That's on my bucket list is find find a a treasure treasure map and like hunt the treasure down. Dude, free birthday gift idea. Make him a scavenger hunt. Dude. Hide a a present somewhere. Whoa. Make sure it's like, Easy enough for an average person to solve. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know? Well, no NASA <laughs> shit. No, 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 no science. Don't shit. A little bit. <laughs> I don't wanna, yeah, no sundials. Under and shit. the media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you I'm, think? Do you think this this movie did service to the like the the world of archaeology, or do you think it did a disservice to it? Uh, that's a great question. I think that average question. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would. I, I'd say that just jealous. It did <laughs> Fuck by, you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask an average question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that what it did was it thrust archaeology into the mainstream. Like the whole, you know, I know you, you mentioned like the whole just like suave professor thing. Archaeology is not fucking sexy, but he makes it sexy. You know, like you have the girl with the, the writing on her eyes and shit. So, <laughs> and, but not not only that, I think it just made people. I mean, it obviously glorified it. It is not a representative of what archaeology is. But before that, people didn't really give that much of a shit about archaeology. Like, as far as, like, pop culture, there wasn't a lot. Like, yeah, people talked about pyramids and this and that. But it was kind of dinosaurs. reserved to, yeah, dinosaurs. But it was reserved to, like, academic circles or, like, specific niche interests. Like, there wasn't, like, any real pop culture archaeologist. And so by doing this, 
uh, you know, it, it, it put it into the mainstream and it was an inspiration for people like me. He was, you know, obviously an inspiration doing what I want to do. I have a full movie poster of his on my wall in my house. Right. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I, and I hear so many people talk about like they reference Indiana Jones when talking about archeology, span they talk about how, you know, it's like, Oh, it's so cool. I watched Indiana Jones growing up and now I watch your videos. So it's like, yeah. it, what it did was not a, a service for academic archeology, span but it made it a popular thing and made it things that people are interested in. Right. And no one watches that movie and thinks archaeologists all carry a fucking gun and a whip and kill people. But they right. should. But they should. <laughs> yeah, but they, you know, they, they see that and they're like, Look that's fucking dope. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, the aliens yeah, out there shaking sure. notes, they're like, we need okay. to bring I need a big in. fucking hat and uh, whips. Yeah. Chains. Whips. Hold the chains. Yeah, hold the we'll chains. Just, we'll, we'll work on whips. that. Yeah. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, my One of my favorite misdirects in the film I mean, being the only one, I suppose, was the hanger. The dude um, that shows up in the tent when she's a prisoner and the oh, can't no floor line. <laughs> Yo, she's got the dress on, right? And the dude comes in, dude oh, takes wait, the- his jacket off, and he pulls like, <laughs> I was like, did he just pull nunchucks out? Yeah. I was like, oh shit, nunchucks. And then I was like, ball and gag? Like, cause he just it's like kept like hanger, morphing, yeah. and then he's like, "I'm like clothes hanger." Yeah, I was like, like where is he going that? with this? Yeah. Oh. I was like, "Okay, where?" I need yeah. one of them shits. Those are kind of slick. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. So, what's your take on the Ark of the Covenant? Like overall, like do you have a take? Like do we? Like is it just what? I think that. It's not. It's not like actually a thing. Like, is there like literature that talk we don't about? Know. Well, again, I, I am not a biblical archaeologist, but from sure. what I know, I mean, most legends have basis in reality. Um, the one that comes to mind is there is a flood myth from the uh, Pacific Northwest um, from one of the indigenous groups there who I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, no, it was multiple groups. Multiple groups had a myth about a giant flood, like a huge wave which washed over the countryside and you know wiped a bunch of people out. And in one of those stories, it was a eagle spirit that you know dropped the whale spirit into the ocean and it made a really big splash and wiped everything out. And people were like, oh, great. You know, it's folklore. It's knowledge. It's, you know, just sort of a thing that really doesn't mean much. Time goes on, and it is found in the geologic record that there had been a slip of the San Andreas Fault, and it had caused a massive tsunami that hit the coast. Now, these people obviously didn't know what fault lines were at the time. This is a very, like, recent discovery, but that myth explained what had happened, and that myth had perpetuated even till now, meaning that we have a verbal record of something that happened way before contact, you know, with, you know, Columbus Mm. and all that. So... When we talk about things like the Lost Ark, do I think that it has the power that if you open it up, it will melt everyone's faces? Definitely. Probably not. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I'm average. I just average. thought that's where yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. with it. That's where you're so, going with it. So, shit. you know, I, I don't think it's impossible that there is something that could in some way have become the story of the Lost Ark. I think it's very likely, you know? Okay. Speaking of arcs. What's your take on Noah's Ark? Because like they haven't, it's archaeology based. We're like, where the fuck is it? It's yeah. a big fucking boat. Big boat. Where'd that go? So Noah's Ark, I firmly believe, is just a myth. I I don't think there was any global flood that wiped out all life on Earth. What we know now, I mean, I don't know how the world would have been repopulated from a handful of people and two of each animal. Everything would get inbred to shit and die. You know, so, it, uh. it, and, and obviously that gets into a whole theological thing. Um, but as far as that story in and of itself, I don't think that really happened. What I do think is it's very likely that that could have been based on a story of someone who had a farm, massive flood, saved all his animals by putting them on a boat. You know, like that seems like a pretty reasonable (laughs) way for that to start, you know, and then like, so there very well could have been a Noah somewhere, a cattle farmer. He puts all his shit on a fucking boat and people are like, that is fucking dope. They tell stories about it. come on your ark? Yeah. He's like, like, nah, "Nah, bitch, I got to get the goats on here too. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely not. Uh, Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Okay. So, because I know you have, um, like you're, if we didn't already touch on it, we'll touch on it and plug it at the end, but uh, Milo got the the TikTok game, and I know you yeah. have an, uh, a segment. You do talk about some of the things I'm talking about, like Atlantis and for sure. pyramids and um, Noah's Ark, which I did listen to them. They're dope. Um, but moving on to the next one, I was going to ask you about is uh, like pyramids, and you we touched briefly on the aliens. Don't fuck up the microphones, aliens. Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, do you? What's your speculation? It is kind of curious on the pyramids. Yeah, just like yeah. like your take so, on that. One thing that I think is difficult to kind of put into perspective from where we 
live now in the world we live in now where, you know, you work a job and you go to the grocery store and you commute to and from work at the time when the pyramids were built, that was like the project. Like you could afford to put all of your manpower into making that. So when we view it, it's like, how would you employ those people and you know, taxes? Slaves, and they don't right? have all that. Um, a lot of them were very highly trained craftsmen. There was yeah. a lot of slavery in ancient Egypt. Um, but as far as the pyramid, to make something that perfect, the people had to know their shit. And right. it was a huge operation. So the the uh, some of the stone was taken down the Nile River. And there's recently been some evidence to suggest that the blocks were almost moved fully into place by flooding areas of the desert around the pyramids and floating the blocks. So they would put these uh, like giant, like, floatable, buoyant things on them, which makes, you know, you can see a cargo ship, which would probably, you know, I can't imagine how much those things weigh, but they float on water if you have mm. enough buoyancy. Easier to dig one trench than move a thousand blocks. Exactly, exactly. Right. So they would float them almost to where they need to be and then drag them in uh, to place. So we don't know exactly how they built it. Anyone who tells you that they have 100% proof is probably wrong um there's a lot of very good working theories about how they built it um but the biggest thing to remember about it is they exist you look at them and you're like that is there so one way or another they did build them you know Mm. like when you look at it it's not like well i don't know how they did it so it must be aliens you're like it is right there it has all of the words on it from you know people who built it and there's you know quarries for the stone right next to it and stuff like that so it's like they built it somehow we don't know exactly how, but they did do it, which is just mind blowing to think of. And I hope someday we are able to find the exact, you know, answer there. I, I love how in your videos that you call people out on inaccuracies and you know any drawbacks of some sort of conspiracy theory that they're trying to lay out, and then you shit on them <laughs> and you throw like hella shade, like you'll put their account up, like, and I'm like, oh, he's he's putting throwing some smoke out. And I wonder, do you get any shade back when you oh. blow smoke like that? Yeah, <laughs> so I definitely sometimes do. Um, I had one recently. I had a flat earth person who definitely like tried to like, clap back the chick. Yeah, she, yeah, she was like, you see on a ball when water rolls yeah. off a ball. And then it's, yeah. I was like, this bitch, like and gravity, also, like what's good with it? She right? also started <laughs> by being like, she was like, and I'm not going to have to like throw insults in order to say my thing. And I'm like, you know what? I, I respect someone who can uphold the high bar, but I'm like, have some fun with me. Come on. On. If you're gonna like come right. back, like just you can have some sort of Don't funny. Take that goes, yeah, like I'm I'm trying to be a little light with this. If anything, you did her a favor. It, it was shout her out, a boost. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, now the 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 whole like I don't know th- that whole series though, or w- with that particular uh, young woman, she d- was talking later in one of her videos, and she was like, you know, this is all I can't remember what she said. I think she said like all of these terms are things which are just meant to confuse you. I don't know if you guys like watched that video, but that got me thinking, and I was like this is really sad and I don't want to go on with it anymore. Cause I was like, this person clearly just had a really bad experience with like a science teacher. And that's something which I come yeah. across a lot is like a lot of these people are conspiracy theorists and they just distrust everything. Uh, like they felt so shitty in their schooling experience that they're like, everything these people are saying to me is a lie. And uh, like, that's really sad. And like, you know, it's fine to sit there and you know, I open my video called their Jersey shore. It's a cheap fucking blow. It really is. But it's like, I, 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 I feel, yeah, yeah. It gets a chuckle, you know, but it's like, it, it, it feels <laughs> shitty to keep doing it when I'm like this person like genuinely was so traumatized by whatever tr- like that childhood educational experience yeah, yeah you know and like and That's I, I, I am with math so yeah no <laughs> valid I fucking hate math I hate it it was awful chemistry also don't even get me started on that shit um <laughs> but yeah no so like that's something that I also notice a lot is a lot of the people who believe in these conspiracy theories are people who like they just distrust everything around them. If you find someone who believes in one conspiracy, it is more than likely that they believe in almost all of them. <laughs> then for you, like it's more likely for you to find someone that believes in every conspiracy than just one. Right. Like if right. I asked you one, I'm sure you could think of one that you sort of believe in, but you're not a conspiracy theorist. No. Most right. people who are, they believe in a whole bunch of shit because right. they are lying to you, whether it be NASA or their fifth grade science teacher. I definitely so, like I to yeah. check shit out and for I'll sure. be like, that's curious. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. Moving on. What's next? I think there's definitely a big difference between having an open mind. Like, Mm -hmm. just being like, hey, like, I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. Right? And I'm cool to listen to people say things that maybe is something uh, along the lines of something I don't understand or I don't know and listen to it and see if they have more knowledge than I do and take in some of that knowledge. But, like, to then flip-flop on that and not just be open-minded to things you don't understand, but then to fully believe things that have less credibility 
just more, I guess, emotion and compassion yeah. behind them. <laughs> just and then disprove everything that's been proven already, just because you don't trust it. Yeah, I think is kind of an absurd way of thinking, right? Yeah, it, well said. It doesn't yeah. really make sense because. But I think what Miles was saying is there was a maybe traumatic or just really poor experience with education with science teachers because we all know science teachers can be a little off putting. So I, I connect with that. I feel like that's the case for a lot of people. And same yeah. with math teachers. It's like, this is kind of challenging and obscure. I don't want, I want to go to lunch or something. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to hear about the periodic table or whatever. And then, you know, they start resenting. And as they get yeah. older, they have less um, checks and balances on their idea, ideas and ideology. So they'll go off and go on YouTube and find a bunch of, unfortunate like-minded people to validate yeah. their shitty ideas no. so yeah. science teachers need to step it the fuck up yeah no that's because, completely true. like yeah that's, okay, it is it is it's completely <laughs> true and i've got some people being like I, I i've had a couple people who are teachers who responded to that video and they're like yeah but like it's not always a teacher it's like you know sometimes you have a student that just sucks and i'm like fair. i'm like average fair. i'm sure average, average students yeah, i'm like uh, fair sometimes you may get a student who just doesn't give a shit but also it is your job as a teacher sure, yeah. to make them feel as included and as loved and as supported as yeah. possible. You're not there just to make the people who are good at it better. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, very good point. Yeah. Good if anything, it. if you have a shitty student, give that student extra time because uh. you could be the difference between them going on to foster a passion they really care about and them going on to spout fucking that shit on the internet, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like it is the job as a teacher, even if it's a little extra work to work with a pain in the ass student, 100%. you got to do it. I want to <laughs> shout you out big time though, yeah. because you, you hear a lot of people go to school for something that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Archaeology is an example of it. Or yep. like, uh, you know, you go to school for like art or something, whatever the case is, right? And you have this huge passion for it, but you end up not being able to find any kind of actual career in that. So you yeah. just end up teaching, right? Yeah. But like, I fuck with the fact that like, you're a modern day archaeologist that's probably going to do stuff in the field eventually, right? Yeah, yeah, but for sure. But also you're not just like, I'm just going to go teach it. You're yeah. like, no, like I'm going to make a fucking uh, like online catalog yeah. of my career and something I'm passionate about and make a career out of that instead of just going back into the education. System. Yeah. Like I fuck with that. that I, I really stuff. appreciate that. Yeah. And that's something which I really try and do with my videos is something that's always really frustrated me for kind of talking about education and passion here is education in this country currently is locked behind a paywall. You have to be rich in order to become educated. Yes, you can do all this research online, but you can't go to college unless you get a really good sponsorship or uh, scholarship or you can afford to go there. Right. And that will just naturally bottleneck people who can afford to go to college to be able to be the well, ones who are educated. Yeah. So you have people who, <clears throat> by not their choice, grew up with not a lot of money who are not able to go and they are not able to learn. And that has nothing to do with, there could be someone sitting right now somewhere who is equally as passionate about any of the things we love and they just didn't have the money to be able to learn it. Right. YouTube is free. TikTok is free. One of the things that frustrates me so much that I saw the other day is one of my fellow archaeology YouTubers. He's a, um, a he is a professor, um, but he was doing some debunking thing. And the person who he was talking to was also very highly academic and told him that if he wanted to argue with him, he should publish a paper on it. I fucking hate that because I've had to read a lot of papers in my day. When was the last time either of you were like, yeah, I'm kind of interested in something, so I'm going to look up a never. fucking paper on it? Never, never, Not unless I was fucking to never. In Not unless you were forced to in college, yeah. rightfully, because they're boring as sin, and I don't want to go out of my way to do that Correct. and you have to like i took classes on learning how to read those papers yep. which you had to pay for so it's like why the fuck would i spend all this time publishing a paper which costs money takes months and months and months so that like 10 people will read it right mm. And it I won't have, make a drop in the ocean. I never like the the education system right now is fucked. Oh, it's it, it's absolutely fucked. fucked. Like, yeah, because even if you even if you don't have the money to go, but you figure it out, you end up walking out with a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Exactly, that you're tied to for the rest of your yeah. fucking life. Over what? Like, especially because two of the years that you go to school, you learn the same shit that you learned in high school. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you there for? Yeah, like, it, and, and you know, it's just because it's a money it's a money game it all is. around. It is the, the only way they can fund their new upgrades and all of their shit that they do their all their schools all the time is just so they get more people. To more more young people to go into debt. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, um, <laughs> what is your favorite conspiracy theory? 
that you've come across. Ooh, you're like favorite. That's a great question. Like, oh, I want this to be real. Like, okay, what? This I is actually good. do have one. I've got this as a question a lot, and I've never oh, actually really? answered it publicly. So I'm very oh, glad to have right. a forum to <laughs> speak at the movie ramp break, motherfuckers. First. Yeah, yeah, you heard plug, it first plug, at plug. the movie <laughs> ramp break. We got Milo, <laughs> aka Mini Minute Man. Fucks with your boy. Drop in the fucking first conspiracy I believe in. All right, all right, let's do it. Oh, you believe in it? Well, I would say. It's one of those ones that I can't prove is wrong. I can't prove is wrong, oh. but I think it's very interesting. Okay, I'm ready. I think it is possible that at some point throughout Earth's history, there has been another sentient species like us at some point because it has been – Earth's history is so fucking old that we wouldn't – have any evidence of it left over the mm. longest lasting things that humanity has built actually there is here's a, an interesting question what do you think if humanity disappeared off the face of the earth today what would be the last things left as a testament to us being on earth mm. it'd probably be the stuff that was built already like in, in the past past like do the, you have any like particular like the pyramids or something like, okay like as opposed to like everything we build now i feel like would fall apart really i feel like the cities the cities i guess so New York City would be gone in about 300 years. Everything would just collapse, be covered, be gone. The Great Pyramids of Giza and Mount Rushmore would be the two final remaining things yeah, of us. Right. They're made out of and, rocks. Yeah, they're made out of rocks. They are already in the form that they naturally want to be in, so they don't really decompose too much more. Right. Um, whereas metal, it'll oxidize, fall apart. You know, this house would be gone in Plus, 200 years. Plus, there's not years. a lot of water in oh, that's like, so it's not like there's going to be corroding. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Corrosion. So New York would eventually just turn to dust. My but answer Egypt, fucking sucked. That was so average of me to say cities. <laughs> uh, well, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, like Mount Rushmore, you're saying like the two things would be the pyramids and Mount Rushmore. So like the four faces, you got like what, Abe Lincoln, Washington, who's a... Dude, if, okay. if, imagine, dude, the, I, if there was a oh simulation that God. lasted, they would see that and they'd be like, God. Dude, like, who are these motherfuckers? Yo. <laughs> Also, they would think those are gods. Yeah, they were, yeah they really. Were, I know. If really nothing else is gods. left, they'd have yeah. four gods. Interesting. Because that would be like a thing that It is a beautiful like. piece of irony that the two oldest things are going to be like, to this day, like one of the, like, he loves that. Yo. <laughs> like, yo, this mountain's got a fucking face on it. There's four faces. Like, <laughs> our four faced no. god. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. 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 That's yeah so I do think it's very funny that the two things which are going to last the longest are like the pyramids, which we all learn about in history, and then like, just I, I, Mount Rushmore is just an eye rolling thing, and so just that how that awful <laughs> that whole thing was. Um, but either way, those would be the last things left of ours. So, if there was a species in the past with a similar amount of cognitive ability, we would have literally no evidence of it. Like, where would it be? You know, and like maybe there is something that we could make. I'm even thinking plastics, but plastics decompose just very slowly. Right. But like, if there was something that lived alongside the dinosaurs, like millions of years ago we probably would have no evidence that it ever existed. Right. So it's less a conspiracy to say, I have all this evidence. It's more saying, I have no evidence, and therefore, I don't know. It's like, very what, possible. So what do you think? Were they like humans, or were they like different species? It's hard to say. I think that it probably would have been, depending on when they arose. I mean, at the time of the dinosaurs, the Earth was you know infinitely hotter. There was giant reptiles everywhere. So it's likely that it could have been the reptilians. Um, you know, wow. so they they uh, but you know it could have been something. And I'm not saying they were exactly you know they were bipedal with thumbs and really big brains. Um, but you know something that was able to build and construct and develop and have belief and civilization and life and all of that um, uh, you know because we wouldn't know today yeah because essentially what you're saying is if they weren't using stone there would be no way to confirm whether or not they were here at whatever time yeah and they even been gone if hypothetically even if they were using stone and had stone tools and things like that those would have been i mean the continents have split apart since that time span. Oh, you believe in so Pangea? There, there Pangea been, is like for real? Pangea is for real, yes. That's real. Yeah, continental, well, I guess sort of continental. See, see, yeah, plate tectonics. See, I, that's another one of those. I'm like, maybe? Like, yeah. I, I'm average. So, so, so like. if, if, if you, yeah. So the, the reason why they're able to give that some amount of validity is because there are, if you were to go to the coast of, actually, uh, in Islesboro, if you were to go to Islesboro, my girlfriend was talking about this, there's, you know, like these stones, which are very, um, they're, they're like some of the oldest stones in Maine. Their sister stones are in Europe because they were once connected. Uh, if you look oh, at the Appalachian mountain range, once the one of the largest mountain ranges on earth, it would have rivaled the Himalayas. Um, the mountains that are in Appalachia and the Scottish Highlands are part of the same mountain range. It just broke apart and is weathered down. I, I have, yeah. like, joking aside, I've heard these type of validations with it where, like, the same type of stones or, like, rare 
um, uncanny similarities between like Maine and say a place over in Europe, like they're like sister and brother yeah. location. So I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah for sure. I- I'll go with that. Like, I, yeah, and you can may, even see it on a map, like the way that like the, the top yeah, yeah. part of Africa would fit perfectly into above yeah, South yeah. America. Like it looks like a big puzzle piece, you know? Pangea is cool. I'm not yeah, it's pretty dope. anti-Pangea. Like, I'm glad. <laughs> no, I, I just like, <laughs> thank God. I yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's I a believe in Pangea. Anti-Pangea. I like that. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't start Pangea. the hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Okay. Is the biggest archaeology mystery for you is like the whole possibility of sentient beings being potentially here before, like with the dinosaurs? Is that what you would say? So I would say that that would probably be something that if ever proven, I mean, it would be groundbreaking. That would be so fucking cool. Um, As far as the biggest like archaeological mystery, I I don't know what the biggest one is, but I can subjectively say what the biggest one is. My dream is um, to somehow someday be able to be connected to the discovery of the Hanging Gardens, which is the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world that we have no proof ever actually existed. So all of the other ones we have evidence of. What is this? Um, The Hanging Gardens in Babylon. They were a massive... It's supposed to be the Garden of Eden. It it was... was it was, I think, I think that was portrayed in in Eternals, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was. I don't know, we don't even bring up Marvel the Garden enough. of Eden is like biblical, but I guess it goes to like a whole kind of you know spirituality surrounding a, a well, lush green place. Well, I'm saying that like they have said like I think specifically like specifically people that are into the theology of the Garden of mm-hmm. Eden saying that the Hanging Gardens in Babylon was like Interesting. Some, I thought I've heard that. Huh, like, I, don't I wouldn't think, be surprised. As no. a slightly above average person, I don't think I could make that <laughs> up. But I'm pretty sure that's like what they're like, yeah, that's been a, I don't know. I've, yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't be I'm shocked, not, honestly. Yeah. That's but I, I mean, they, they found all the other ones, the lighthouse at Alexandria and the, you know, the great pyramids of Giza and all, all of the other ones we know existed. Um, <clears> but <throat> the hanging gardens is the only one that doesn't, and it would be enormous. It was, you know, a, apparently just like a massive, uh, almost stepped pyramid structure that had flowing water. It had aviaries in it with birds from all over the world. It had like oh, flowers and it was upkept by, I believe the King, uh, as like a place for his wife to go. Wow, um, and bitches. it was like, yeah, bitches. Exactly. <laughs> he gets it. Um, and so, you he know, a lot of it's like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and so that would be really interesting to find because there are accounts of it. Apparently, um, when Alexander the Great died, he died within view of the Hanging Gardens. I wonder but if we, he's a map. There's a map. I, I wonder if you, there's a map. <laughs> I was going to ask you, like, if you had to point your finger on a map as to where this would be. like, It was in the city of Babylon, supposedly. So, I mean, they've done archaeological excavations, finding, like, the whole city, and they have not found it. So it's theorized right now that it was in reference to the fact that Babylon had such good irrigation that it was like the gardens of Babylon. Like mm-hmm. everything was lush in the desert and they were able to, you know, make life in an arid place. So they think it might be more of like an analogy, very similar to like the whale and eagle tsunami story I told earlier that just has been perpetuated throughout time to become a different version. Well, what if, what if Babylon is Atlantis? And oh, shit. Atlantis is the Garden of Eden. It's all look. You're, you're taking this above average thing, and you're really running with it, right? I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm trying to impress you and everybody outside. I felt kind Take of a belittled. Whole step yeah. back, okay, bro. <laughs> I'm getting too above average right now. Yeah, the big brain is expanding. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> oh, I love shit. it. So, w- most hated conspiracy. Most hated conspiracy. Flat, is it flat Earth? Honestly, probably not. I think my most hated ones are probably, I would, I would have to go with ancient aliens just because they are so, I mean, there's a lot of them, but they are so frequently talked about and so many people spout them without realizing the fact that they were literally started by Nazis and are still like so inherently racist. I mean, every single one revolves around a civilization that wasn't in Europe <clears throat> and being like, right. well, how could they have done that? It was impossible for them. It must have been aliens. Like, how fucked up is that? No one is like, oh, you know, like, you know, the, the Parthenon or something like that, like some beautiful construction from the Mediterranean and like where white people are from. It's like, oh, yeah, that must have been aliens building that. No, it's like the pyramids or like Machu Picchu. It's like, why the fuck would the people who built Machu Picchu be any less civilized or developed than mm. the people in Rome. They just had a different way of doing it, right. you know? So, like, yeah, it, I think you South know, America especially. Like, I feel like South yeah. America was crazy. Yeah. Like, I feel like they were way more advanced than we, like, modernly give them credit for. Agreed. Like, Machu yeah. Picchu yeah. was sick. 
Yeah, exactly. Like uh-huh. they just did some insane shit. And it was uh-huh. like, you know, just the fact that they weren't, you know, part of Rome or like whatever other things there were. Like they, they just assumed that it had to be aliens. Uh, dinosaurs take on it. Let's go with it. Shit's awesome. Fucking love dinosaurs. I'm not a, I'm not a paleontologist. So like I don't know a whole lot about them, but when I was a kid, shit was uh, fucking awesome. Shots Spielberg. Yeah. With the dinosaurs. Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I heard something the other day and it was like talking about like two dinosaurs living and it was like talking about a T-Rex. It was a Jurassic Park video I was watching. It was a T-Rex and like a Triceratops Mm -hmm. or something. And they're like, this T-Rex lived closer to human beings than the Triceratops lived to the T-Rex. Yeah. It's like in time. Like the, like we, we are closer in time to a T-Rex than the T-Rex was to the Triceratops or something. I don't know if the Triceratops is the right one. The like, amount of time that humans have like or like that mammals have dominated the world is like terrifyingly small Small. so that's another one of those things where i'm like when they do the time of Mm. how some old something is Uh oh the average is going down is my meter Uh Uh meter? (laughs) is it going down listen the time thing for real i'll stand by this like when someone's like this is 88 million years old i'm just like shut up like i'm sorry yeah like like, we're we're not doing that Mm. we're not doing that you're wrong (laughs) like uh, i'll yeah i'll be average over here and know that i don't think you've confirmed there's this thing is 88 million years old i just i don't buy it that's personally. an uh, that's an i mean that's another thing that people bring up a lot um whenever talking i'm talking about like conspiracies that involve like dating things a lot of the time there is like a huge amount of distrust in dating methods and the most common one is radiocarbon dating radiocarbon. um but people have i've heard so many people be like oh well if an artifact was found in water you can't radiocarbon date it which like it does change it but we know how it changes it so you can account for that and you know make up the difference um but for things like that it's obviously a lot more difficult um because radio carbon dating is very standard. You have a natural piece of material and you directly date the material. For things like that, you have to date them using stratigraphy, which is like the rocks around them. And in order to date those rocks, there's all kinds of fucking crazy shit you have to do, whether it's a volcanic rock or whether it's a, you know, metamorphic rock, or if it was an ash deposit, which was laid down by a volcano, you could um, do that with, um, I think it's potassium argon dating, which is like created during heat. Um, And you can see how much of the potassium argon has disappeared over time and figure out how old it is. But I mean, it's insane shit. And like genuinely from, uh, you know, like for an average person... <laughs> You've been demoted. No. For, for an average person, and myself included, I couldn't like prove to you that I, I know how to carbon or like date stone. Right, if, right. if you gave me a piece of rock and told me to tell you how old so, it is, I'd tell you to go so fuck So it's yourself. alleged and I'm right. It's a, so it, what, look. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's running with it. Right. So like, what's the oldest thing we've ever radiocarbon dated? So, it's only natural things. Right? Yeah. So radiocarbon dating can go back. I think it's accurately, you can accurately date to about 50,000 years ago. So it has a very short, and sure. you're talking about, you know, the dinosaur thing and stuff like dinosaurs, the, the, so the Chicxulub asteroid rock. was, yeah, the, that, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was like 65 million years ago. And then like, they've existed for like three up, like up until 300 million years ago or something like that. Right, right. But it's like, that's so much older that you can't, do that. There's right. no carbon left. They're right. just stone, you know? And so that was the other thing, like your, your conspiracy theory with the sentient beings thing. Like, mm. why wouldn't we find fossils of their bodies, though? Well, that's the thing is we may have, but we wouldn't know they were sentient. Right. Because You know? Uh, They're just bones, uh, yeah. Gosh. So unless they were buried with, like, grave goods and stuff. And we found you know, f- ratioly so few dinosaurs. Like it's like, there's like 12 great specimens from the whole world of this dinosaur. And it's Got like, it. it's been destroyed over time there's and thousands, worn down. Thousands, hundreds of thousands. Oh yeah. I can't imagine how many are out there that have just been undiscovered, you know? So or there was not like, impossible. Or there was literally like 50 dinosaurs on this planet that aliens just, <laughs> <put> <laughs> they, they all just died in one place. The Atlanteans. The Atlanteans. the Atlanteans. the Atlanteans. They raised them as cattle. Yeah. They were pets. They would ride them <laughs> into battle. Them. Yeah. Milk them. Yo, T Rex cheese. They've confirmed. I amazing. T Rex cheese. Yeah, I'm a cheap uh, T Rex rancher. T Rex cheese. I love it. I shit my face on the microphone. That's <laughs> Such a good joke. Um, <laughs> shit. So reeling it back in. Shout out back to the Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes. Oh fuck, I forgot. He's about a descendant that. of Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. So on my show, the movie ramp break. What we do here is we rate the film one to ten to the tenth place. That's the ten point one. Point oh, you two, got point that? Point okay. Got All right. Math. So like, that's math. the rating. Yeah. Math. <laughs> Decimals and shit. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. fractions. Yeah. Just, <laughs> um, you go into algebra. I'm <laughs> so to the tenth place, one to ten. Um, 
We just give a rating. We all like give a rating. You can go first being the new guest if you'd like yeah. to give a, a movie score rating for this the This is film. your first movie rank rating. Yeah, this is this is a big one. Yeah. And um, remember, like, you might review films later in your life on the show. And, you know, I usually, the way I do it is, like, so, everything's kind of bundled in, like, comedies and action. Like, I just rank them all one Thing. Like I, I yeah, don't. He doesn't have separate categories. So you know what I mean. Like, so like, he gives, it, like dodgeball got a ten out of ten. For it's you. my favorite comedy. It's a right, fire wow, ass film. It's like a perfect. Go. It's okay. a perfect comedy. But like, there could be a film that's really great and it's only getting like an eight. But like, that's a good rating okay. for me. And or like, a, yeah. So just to give you context, okay. I guess. In that case, I'd probably have to give it between an eight and an eight and a half. I. You got it. You got it. You, it's got to be. Oh, it has to be. It's got to be, be, be okay. Eight point three. <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel like, yeah. Math. Exactly. Math. Um, I would say that eight and it's, three tenths. Yeah, eight, eight and three tenths. It's a, <laughs> it's a phenomenal movie. I really can't like fault it for anything. I think the only reason I step it down and don't make it like a nine or something is because I like. Um, some of the other installations in the series more, like I've yeah. alluded to, Better. you know, I like, yeah, I, I like the one with Sean Connery more, um, which doesn't make this one a bad movie. There's just things that one does that this one doesn't that I really enjoy. Um, so I'd probably have to stick with my, I'll stick with my 8.3. Yeah. 8.3. John Smith, what you hit it with? I was going to give it an 8.5. Wow. Nice. Oh, no. Nice, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Okay. 8.5. That was what I was thinking. Now, I'm going to hit it with a 7 just because like, the film is great. Mm-hmm. It deserves its praise. Just personally, like for a film that I personally like and like get into, it's not really my style, but definitely mm-hmm. respect, salute, love the characters and everything in it. But I'm going to hit with a seven because I yeah. do know that I like the third one the best. I haven't mm-hmm. seen all of them in a long time, which hopefully maybe we get to. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to do more. Uh, and um, I know that I got to reserve. That's what I'm saying when I said, yeah, keep in mind, like <laughs> if you do other films, cause like, if I give a 10 to this one, say I really liked it, and then there's like one that comes out later that I really like, mm-hmm. to me, it's like a disservice to just like put 10s across something that could potentially. Yeah. Like I know that third one I like more. So, yeah. and it's not a 10, but so. Like I gave this one 8.5 because it was the 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 beginning of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that's why it sneaks up. So even if I find like the third one on I do watch it, if I find it better than this, like I'm okay with ranking them the same off the strength of not not just because the movie's better, but this one also started it. It paved the way yeah. for it. Yeah. Which I think gives it some credibility. Uh. It also looks like, you know, it, from all of our ratings, you said seven, you said eight point five, and I said eight point three, which I guess to end this all off I guess I'm the one who's average, average now. <laughs> Shit. It went all the way around the table. Yo, <laughs> circle. That's hilarious. Shit. Oh, whoa. Played myself. Damn, bro. Awesome. <laughs> you got some humility in this motherfucker. Congratulations on making it through that entire thing. You're a trooper. As always, I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching the video. It means the absolute world to me. And I'd like to give a huge thank you to the movie Rant Break for having me on the podcast. It was a ton of fun. It was really cool to be able to hang out with some people and just talk about a bunch of random bullshit. It felt very natural. Not only should you check out the movie Rant Break in the description below, but also uh, John and 1UP are both artists, so if you want to check out their music, all of that is linked below as well. If you're someone who's into rap and hip-hop, then you're gonna love it. I'd also like to thank Ground News for sponsoring this video and helping make the world of fact available to all. And I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my videos. As always, patrons' names will be in the credits of this video as a small token of my gratitude. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, Stay average.